Hello and welcome to Alula's webinar. My name is Kevin Hoffman. I'm the Content Marketing Manager for Alula. And today we will be talking about Back Connect, the ultimate takeover communicator. We'll be looking at why you'd be interested in Back Connect, some of its features and benefits, uh, how it works with touchpad, video, and automation, the panels that it's compatible with. We'll take a look under the hood, discuss some of the industry recognition we've received, walk you through a product roadmap, and then take some Q&A at the end. The presenter for today is Chris Bartholomew. He is a sales engineer at Alula with 20 years of industry experience. He has a strong background in intrusion, access, fire, and video detection systems, and he joined Alula in September 2018. Chris, welcome to the webinar. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, first, just want to give you a little bit of background information uh, on Alula. I, I realize a lot of folks on the call today may be hearing the term Alula for the first time. So, uh, Alula was actually created out of a merger between IP Datatel and Resolution Products. Most of you have probably heard of both Resolution Products on the sensors and the translator side, as well as IP Datatel on the network and communication side. So there's about 12 years of trusted and reliable security hardware and platform innovation. Actually, Alula engineers were behind some of the earliest wireless panels on the market panels such as the Caretaker, the SX Series, Commander, Simon, UltraGuard, et cetera, et cetera. So the Bat Connect is really the first new product combining the best engineering from both resolution products and IP data tell. And that takes us right into our introduction of Bat Connect. This is a very high level look at it. Chris, what are some of the important features? Some of the important features are the ability to take that old, outdated security system, whether it be a Honeywell, a DSC, an Interlogix panel, a NAPCO panel that's been out there for years, and you know perhaps it still works fine, the customer's comfortable with how it operates, but the landline goes away. Customers switch over to voice over IP, or probably of, of utmost concern to most of us on the call today is the sunset that's gonna be taking place here coming up. So this is a great way for the end user to keep using what they have, but get them into a modern look and feel as far as a, either a touchscreen or an app experience. We're also able to add video and home automation to that old panel that's been on the wall forever. So bring them into the modern world. Uh, one of the nice things about the new BAT Connect is it's gonna combine the best features of the existing BAT LTE and the existing BAT Wi-Fi. And also with the ability to remotely program the Bat Connect, we're going to save your company time and money without having to have the installer spend all day programming the panel. Most of this can be done remotely. Great, Chris. You mentioned that interface. That's where it all uh, begins. Um, that's the important part for the end customer, uh, having that modern look and feel. So tell me a little bit about what the Alula app looks like with Bat Connect. Yeah, if, if anyone on the call today has used the Connect, Connect Plus panel from Alula, we're actually taping, taking that app interface, that app experience, which is modern, intuitive, and we're bringing it to that old, like we said before, Honeywell, DSC, GE, NAPCO panel that perhaps couldn't have had an app just due to the age of that panel that's out there. The nice thing about the Alula app and also our new Alula touchscreen is it is the same look and feel on both the app and the touchscreen. So really, we're only teaching or training the end user on one product, whether it be the app or the touchscreen. It is the same look, feel, and functionality. Okay. Now, the touchscreen that we're inducing, it's not necessary to have this touchscreen. It's a nice option, but if all the customer had really was their uh, smartphone or tablet of some sort, that's all they would really need to operate uh, their security system. We're going to give them, either with the touchscreen or the app slash tablet, full system and zone status displayed on the app, as well as trouble conditions, user code manage, management, the ability to configure their cameras, bypassing, so everything the end user needs to operate their security system, we're able to give them that capability with the Bat Connect. Thank you, Chris. You mentioned that new slimline touchpad. 
Um, I've got a chance to see it. It is really slick. Um, you, you played with that yourself a little bit? Absolutely. The ability to control my Z-Wave devices, the ability to arm and disarm in the same fashion as I'm able to do via the app, the ability to create scenes and groups, and some of this we'll talk about here and coming up in the ensuing slides, but it is truly a modern look, modern feel that mirrors the app experience for the end user. And just to be clear, uh, you don't need to use that touchpad. It's a nice addition, but you could just do it on your phone. Absolutely. Touch screen, touchpad is not necessary, but it is a nice addition. Excellent. Speaking of nice additions, uh, we all know that video is an important part of any modern um, security system. And I understand that Back Connect allows you to bring video to those legacy panels. Absolutely. We've got a, a number of camera choices that we can use uh, with those legacy systems. I had mentioned um, you know, DSC, Honeywell, GE, NAPCO, but uh, let's say you've got a communicator from 1980 that's still up and running. We're still able to add any one of our Lula cameras to that uh, security system as well. Full capability through our app and soon to be through our touch screen. And uh, we all know we've been hearing a lot about the popularity of video doorbells in the market. A uh, recent study that came out suggests that one in four households plan to add a video doorbell this year. Um, you can't do that on one of those old Honeywell panels, can you? Absolutely, you cannot do that. So that's another great feature. The Bat Connect is being able to give a new, fresh experience, especially with video, to those traditional old hardwired wireless systems that couldn't do home automation, couldn't do cameras. So now I can give my end user the ability to live view or look at recorded clips, and I can roll through those recorded clips uh, with a calendar view. I can pull them up. I can email them. I can text them to whomever. So great new feature of the Back Connect is the ability to have video as part of the solution. Yeah, nothing like sending a uh, funny clip to one of your friends um, from some goofball at your front door. So moving on to home automation, um, this is not uh, something that you have to have, but it's something that you can add with the Back Connect. How does that work? Yeah, so once again, the, that old panel that's on the wall in the business that traditionally could never do lights, locks, thermostats, we're going to give you that ability with just a simple addition of a Z-Wave Z card. And if you're familiar with our Connect Plus panel, it's the exact same Z-Wave card that we use on our Connect Plus. So with just a snap-in Z-Wave card, I'll be able to do lights, locks, thermostats, garage doors, virtually any Z-Wave device. And one of the really cool things about the Alula app is the ability to create scenes. Uh, Chris, tell me how that works. Yeah, a scene could be uh, something as simple as, hey, I want my outside lights to come on at a timer. I never want to have to, to flip a switch. Absolutely doable, very easy to do through our scene creation. We can actually take it a step further. Um, traditionally, to do light control on most systems, is you're, you're, you're inputting a schedule. You don't even need to do that with our scene creation. You simply tell the app, you tell the touch screen that you want to base that schedule on sunrise, sunset, and we can off even offset that 15, 20 minutes. One light I want to come on 20 minutes after sunset, uh, one light I want 15 minutes before. So you can stagger it so it's not coming on at exactly the same time every night. And the great part about all that is it's integrated into the same app as your video and security. So you're not going to be having to jump from one app to another. Um, it gets really tiresome to have three or four different apps to do all the different things you have in your home. So we've got a lot of professionals uh, who are watching this webinar, and I know top of mind for them is the question of compatibility. Chris, which uh, various systems will this Back Connect work with? Yeah, great, great question, Kevin. So we are actually planning a phase rollout of the Back Connect. Okay? So what that means, and in a couple slides we'll give you the full timeline, but on initial release, we are going to support fully Honeywell and DSC, and we'll get into what fully means here in a second, but Honeywell and DSC out of the box, out of the get-go, and then Interlogix, Concord, Networks, and then NAPCO as well. So when we mean supported, we're really talking about what is the app experience, what is the remote programming going to look like, okay? Because we're able to get on the keypad bus of Honeywell and DSC right away, and then eventually Interlogix and NAPCO. Okay? 
we're going to have a very good app experience with the ability to program remotely. Having said that, we actually are compatible with any panel that communicates in contact ID. Okay? We will still be able to arm and disarm remotely and give the customer the ability to do video and home automation with Z-Wave. Okay? So even though you might not see your panel in a compatibility list, when we're talking about compatibility, typically we're talking about what's the app experience and the remote programming going to be like. Okay? But remember, if it communicates in contact ID, we can still send those signals to the central station. We can still give them a modern app experience with arm and disarm and the ability to do video and home automation. Chris, I know you've had a chance to uh, hook the back connect up a couple times. Just how easy is it? Yeah, it's very, very simple. Uh, a Honeywell panel, for instance, it's just a four-wire connection. We're taking the bus connection, the bus A and bus B terminals, and then we need to power the bat off of the host panel. panel. So we're bringing in power and ground. So it's just a four-wire hookup. And on a Honeywell panel, tip and ring is not needed. Another new great feature of the Bat Connect is the auto bus detection. So basically on power up, the Bat Connect will recognize what panel it is hooked up to via that keypad bus connection and auto program a handful of fields that traditionally the installer had to do. So we've taken that out of the equation as well. Very easy, simple connection. I also understand that it uses CAT M1 for its cellular connection. Uh, and that's a very low current. Why is that important? Yeah, uh, category M1 is actually one of the, the newer technologies uh, in, the, in the cellular world. So CAT1, the current draw is very, very minimal. So we're talking about the same current draw as a traditional hardwired keypad. Okay? That's about five times less than a, than a comparable cellular module. So we don't need to worry about adding an additional power supply. Okay? Some other great features of the category M1, it is actually a narrower bandwidth which gives you better range than a traditional CDMA cellular radio. Okay? We get faster transmission times over cell because we're using smaller packets because of the narrower bandwidth. So it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, and you can't talk about cellular without uh, raising the specter of the cellular sunset. Um, tell me a little bit about how Bat Connect is going to deal with that problem. Yes, absolutely. So the Bat Connect will be ready to go out of the bat for the cellular sunset. So the M1 will actually, we say that it's 5G, and it is in those areas that support 5G. Now we know that not everywhere will have 5G. Uh, so when 4G does sunset, if there's 5G available, we'll be able to use that. But remember, it also has two other ways to communicate. So in a perfect world, the customer would have Ethernet as well as Wi-Fi, as well as cell. Now, we realize not every customer is going to be equipped with that. If we just needed to go cellular, we could. The point is we have triple path. We have three ways to communicate. We have Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and cellular. And it's that Cat M1 that really makes this the sunset buster. Uh, because when 4G LTE eventually sunsets, that CAT M1 communications path will move to 5G, and therefore, Bat Connect will be able to continue to communicate on that 5G spectrum. So we don't have to worry about sunsets anytime in the future. Another thing you're not going to worry about is more truck rolls. Uh, we're going to be launching Alula Connect at the same time as Back Connect. It's our new partner portal. Chris, this is a good time to walk us through that. Yeah, so we're really excited about Alula Connect and the benefits it offers our dealers. Um, we talked earlier about the ability to remotely manage your Back Connect, and that's true. One of the ways you'll be able to do that is with Alula Connect. So previous versions of the Bat had what was called a virtual keypad, which was virtually a picture of a keypad on a website, and let's say it was a Honeywell panel. So if I'm an installer and I know how to get into Honeywell programming on that Honeywell keypad, I can certainly do that with the virtual keypad that will still be supported with the Lula Connect. We've also given you the ability to program using Compass, if you're a Honeywell installer, 
or PC link if you're a DSC installer. So if your technicians are trained on Compass and or PC link and that is their preferred method for programming, absolutely you will be able to do that as well. So we're going to have a virtual keypad for programming on Alula Connect or we're also going to give you the ability to use that native Compass software or that native PC link software and hook up to your back connect panels that way as well. The other thing that it does, the Alula Connect, is you know, traditionally alarm installers, if they wanted to direct connect on site, they were lugging a laptop, they're lugging out a serial connector, a USB cord, maybe a phone line simulator with an old modem. Those days are done as far as the back connect. The new Alula Connect website will scale nicely on a smartphone. So keep the laptop at home. You could bring it if you wanted to, but if you had a smartphone, everything you need to program remotely or on site is available on Alula Connect. I do everything on my smartphone, so I'm glad to hear that I won't have to bring a laptop. Now let's take a look under the hood of the back connect. Chris, uh, take us left to right across the radio dial and tell us what each of these pieces are. Yeah, so starting in the upper left, obviously you've got your cell antenna there tucks nicely in the left side of the, the bat connect. Um, some of you out there might have a question about, okay, I'm putting my bat connect down in the basement, uh, two stories above, below ground. Is that the best spot for it? No. Uh, will it work down there? And then maybe, maybe not. We do have a cellular strength indicator on the bat connect. My point is we do have remote antennas that will be available for the bat connect to get that antenna to a better spot, okay? Um, Position number two, that's where the cellular SIM card will be inserted. We actually insert the SIM card here at the factory. No need for you to do that, okay? Bulletin point three is actually where we find our LEDs. Now, these LEDs can be helpful for not only checking to see what connection we're on, either Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or cellular. Underneath the cellular, you'll see your four bars. Obviously, those will be lit up accordingly to give you your signal strength. Moving along to the right side of the LEDs, we've got a panel bus LED and a power LED. The device link LED is not used. Don't worry about that LED. What you want to see when you hook up to your panel bus, when you're powered up, is a solid panel bus LED. If it is flashing, we have a problem. Uh, you know, typically, we may have a wire cross. Bus A is where bus B should be and vice versa. Uh, a flashing power LED is what we should see in normal operation. Point number four, upper right-hand corner, is actually our built-in Wi-Fi communicator, Wi-Fi network, if you will. This is important because of our touchscreen. So if you choose to go with the touchscreen, know that the touchscreen communicates with our internal Wi-Fi network. We're not relying on the customer's Wi-Fi, which, as we all know, can go down, passwords get changed, routers get changed. Uh, that all affects your alarm communication traditionally, not with the touchscreen. We have a dedicated Wi-Fi network just for the touchscreens. Okay. If you look below the Wi-Fi uh, communicator, you'll see a, or by number five, a header pin. That is for your optional Z-Wave card to give you the home automation. So just a simple snap-in Z-Wave card for the home automation. Okay. Beneath that, point number six, we have a cover tamper. So when that cover is closed, that depresses that tab. And to the left of that, point number seven, we also have a wall tamper. So we've got cover tamper, we've got wall tamper. These can be enabled and disabled remotely on a Lula Connect. Okay. And then traveling further south, bulletin number eight, point number eight, is our Bat Connect terminal strip. Now, depending on the panel you're hooking up to, um, is going to determine where your wires go. The nice thing is if you're familiar with the current BATS, the LTE and the Wi-Fi, this is the exact same terminal strip as the existing BAT radios as well. So we had mentioned before, you know, like on a Honeywell panel, it's a very simple four-wire connection right in the neighborhood of bulletin point number 10. Number 9 and 10 are your bus connections. So GN, typically green wire, YN, typically yellow. And you got your ground and power to power the bat radio. So simple four-wire connection. Uh, on certain panels, uh, on the DSC, for instance, we're actually doing a keypad bus, and they're also bringing two wires over to tip and ring. Okay. And tip and ring, you're going to see that 
bulletin point 11, far right side of your terminal strip. So worst case scenario, six wires. Okay. Moving along to the right, point number 12 is where we hook up our ethernet. And right above that, point number 13 is our WPS button. So one of the nice things about Alula Connect, if your installer forgot to hit the WPS button on site and marry the BAT Connect with the existing Wi-Fi in the home, not a big deal. As long as the cellular connection is active, we can actually input the Wi-Fi credentials via Alula Connect over the cellular connection. Wonderful. That's a great look at what it does and how it does it. Look, we're all really excited here at Alula. We think Back Connect is a true game changer for the communicator market and that it's really going to change the industry. And we're not alone in that belief. We debuted this at ISC West and we were awarded the New Product Showcase Award for um, Innovation. And then we followed that up at the ESX uh, trade show with another award for Innovation. We are getting a lot of attention in the industry. Um, there's a lot of firsts associated with this product. We're the first out of the gate with CAT M1 technology, and we are continuing uh, Lula's tradition of innovating uh, new features and staying ahead of the game technologically and giving our partners what they need to compete. So let's look at what the next several months are going to look like in terms of upgrades for the Back Connect. Yeah, Kevin, so I think we mentioned before, we're targeting mid-July, July 15th, as a matter of fact, for the Bat Connect to be available in distribution. Sometime in August, we will be releasing the Z-Wave card to give you your home automation for the Bat Connect. In September, we're looking to add the touchpad or touchscreen support. And then in November, full integration with Interlogix, Concord, Networks, and the NAPCO. And exactly how are we going to take, uh, get, get the benefits out there? Do we have to buy anything new? Do we have to send these things back? How are we going to get these features and benefits? Yeah, great, great question, Kevin. And a great thing about the Bat Connect is all of these feature updates will be available with a firmware update that gets pushed out from Alula. So bottom line, nothing you need to buy, nothing you need to do to have your bat connect. Let's say you bought it on July 15th. We will push those firmware updates as needed. So you'll be good to go uh, right at the, at the beginning of, sorry, mid-July for the bat connect. And I understand the bat connect actually just automatically checks what once a day to see if there's a new firmware available. Yeah, once a day we send out updates to both the Bat Connect and also the touchscreen. So nothing you need to do on your end. Well, that certainly makes it convenient. Chris, thank you for taking the time uh, to do this with us. If you have a little bit more time, a few more minutes, I think we could take a few questions from the audience. Absolutely. What have you got? Hey there. So we've got some great questions coming in. Uh, keep them coming. Uh, first question, uh, Chris, comes from Mike. He asks, can connect, uh, can back connect to do two partitions with one wireless keypad? Yeah, so uh, what we're planning in, uh, initially on uh, initial release is via the keypad, we'll be able to control partition one only. However, reporting to the central station will report as many partitions as you have, but as far as keypad control, will just be partition one initially. Got it. Now, Devin has a question. Uh, when is the new facelift rolling out? I think he's probably talking about uh, the app there. Yeah, so I think this question came in a little bit earlier before we talked about the product roadmap, so I'll just, I'll just kind of hit that again. So uh, next week, the Bat Connect will be available via distribution, and then, you know, we talked about the Z-Wave card being released in August, TouchPad support in, in September. Um, NAPCO and Interlogix, think Concord Network slash CADEX sometime fourth quarter about November. I know there's a question coming up here. Of, uh, we'll, we'll get into some more specifics of, of is the panel supported at this date versus the software, so hang tight on uh, those further details. Well, let's get into it. Greg has a question. 
Will the programming be full upload download using the manufacturer's software for Honeywell, DSC, Interlogix, and NAPCO? Yeah, so great, great question. This one's probably on everybody's mind. So as I said before, you know, it's, it's a phased rollout. So basically you're going to see some of the features before you're going to see others. So uh, right out of the bat, we're going to give you a virtual keypad as in next week for your Honeywell panels to upload, download. That's basically um, – on Alula Connect, you will see a picture of the Huntba picture, a, a web interface where there will be a virtual keypad where if you know how to get into Honeywell programming and do what you need to do with Honeywell, you'll be able to do everything. Uh, within a month or two, we are planning on adding Honeywell Compass support and DSC PC Link support. So if you're a Compass guy, if you're a PC Link guy, you're comfortable using their native software, you'll be able to do that give or take a month or so. In the meantime, you'll have the virtual keypad, which would be, you know, if, you, if you've seen it before on uh, uh, our current bat radios, is basically just a website with a virtual keypad that looks just like the Honeywell keypad, and whatever buttons you press on there would be just like standing on site with the Honeywell keypad. So um, to recap that virtual keypad next week, Shortly thereafter, you'll be able to use Compass and PC Link. Fourth quarter, when we add the NACO support and the Inter Interlogic support, we are anticipating using their native software as well. But remember, you'll always have the ability on our website to use the virtual keypad as well. And you may have already answered this one, but uh, Nicholas is asking, what is the difference between this bat and the other ones when it comes to using DLS and Compass? Yeah, so really there isn't a difference. It's just time frame, right, for the release. So, you know, with the current BAT radios, you have Compass, you have PC Link. We're just not quite there yet. Uh, another, you know, hopefully within a month or so uh, to have that with, with BAT Connect. But like I said, you have virtual keypad next week for Honeywell. Okay, now David asks, if I recall correctly, the resolution radios I bought last year included two gig panels but not NAPCO. Will this change? Yeah, actually, uh, it will be changing. Once again, we're, we're looking at about fourth quarter for NAPCO, and we're, we're eyeing the 800, the 801 series, the 816, and the 1632 series from NAPCO. But uh, hang tight till about sometime fourth quarter for that. Great. Now, David asks, what is definitely my favorite question so far? <laughs> did I miss what I that stood for? <laughs> Is, is it burglary you did not alarm miss. takeover? I get this one all the time. Broadband alarm transmission. Broadband alarm transmission. Burglary alarm takeover sounds pretty good, though. Yeah, you could substitute a few things for that, but uh, broadband alarm transmission. Okay, we've got Matt now. He's asking uh, about specific panels. Is the DSC Power Series Neo compatible or just the DSC Power Series? Yeah, I actually tested this one a couple of weeks ago. The Neo is not compatible. It's just the Power Series. But once again, remember, you know, when, when we talk compatibility, it's really what I like to refer to it as what's my app experience going to be like. Because remember, if you have any panel that's spitting out contact ID, we can give them video. We can give them home automation, and we can report to the central station as long as they're doing contact ID. And it'll be a pretty basic app experience, but you know, with the video and the home, home automation, you know, most folks probably aren't gonna mind too much. It's just a basic arm disarm via key switch, which I think most folks on the call are, are familiar with doing that with other communicators. So when we talk compatibility, remember it's, you know, we're, we're talking about, is it a full upload, download, remote programming experience? And in that case, it wouldn't be, um, if it was just a contact ID capture, not the panels that we mentioned before, where we're able to get on the keypad bus. The key is, are we able to get on the keypad bus? And we are with Honeywell Vista, DSC Power Series, soon to be Concord, soon to be Networks, and soon to be NAPCO. Great. Devin's got a question, one of several people with this question. Is Verizon still the main provider for the units? Um, good news. We now have Verizon and AT&T. So you have two options going forward. And just FYI, you'll also have this for our Connect Plus panel as well. 
AT&T is, is now an option. Well, great to have them on board. Andrew's got a question. Um, he's, I believe he's asking, uh, does the uh, programming work just as well with Android as it does on an iPhone? Okay, so I think what we're referring to here is, is we talked about the new website, Alula Connect, um, scales very well on a smartphone. It scales very well on an Android as well as an iPad. Our, I don't want to say our older because it's still up and running, but Alarm Dealer right now, the, uh, one of our one form of the website doesn't scale very well um, to a, a smartphone. Going forward, Alula Connect does scale very well uh, on a smartphone if you are using the virtual keypad to program. So short answer is is yes. Great. And this is a, this is a great uh, question to do some clarification from Christopher. Why is it being called a three-path communicator? If you were using Ethernet, you wouldn't also use Wi-Fi. If cellular is being used as backup, then it is still a dual monitoring communicator, correct? So I'm going to accept uh, a few answers here. <laughs> so I uh, <laughs> totally, uh, totally understand what you're saying here, Christopher, but let me, let me try to explain. Um, let me give you a scenario. So, well, let, I'm, I'm first going to agree with you that, yes, if, if the customer's Internet goes down, right, well, then I've lost the Internet, and then I've lost Wi-Fi. But we, can, we refer to it as a three-path communicator because, let's say, we have our bat plugged in to the router, and the kid wants to hook up an Xbox or whatever, and unplugs bat connect because he doesn't know any better from the router. Okay, we still have Wi-Fi then that would kick in for those types of scenarios. So that's why we're referring to it as a three-path communicator because, like I said, you know, whatever the, the router goes, you know, somebody unplugs bat connect cable from it, we still have the Wi-Fi that's going to kick in. So, um, yeah, I get it where, where some folks will call it a dual-path communicator because you know, if you lost Internet in the home, okay, then we're, then we're, we're on sale right now. So, um, Hope that clears that up for you. That's a good point of clarification. Uh, David, uh, more of a comment than a question. Panel downloading is a great asset. The radios I previously used didn't allow anything other than code changes remotely. Chris, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, how much of an upgrade yeah, this is. Yeah, I, I installer. totally agree. You know, those that have used our current bats, you know, we've had that technology for a lot of years now, but uh, we're bringing it also to Bat Connect. But uh, like I said before, be aware that it, you know, it's a phase rollout. We want to be clear about that, that you'll have virtual keypad next week for Honeywell. Shortly thereafter, you'll have DSC, and hopefully within a month or so, you'll have the native software support um, with Compass and PC Link, and then uh, court fourth quarter, uh, native software for Concord and networks, as well as NAPCO. Got it. Matt, with another good question about those three paths of communication, he asks, do you have to have cellular with the back connect, or can it be Wi-Fi only? Okay, um, this one is uh, maybe a two-part answer. Um, out of the gate next week, the, we have no way to turn off the, the cellular portion, if you will. Um, we are looking at and we are working on an option to just have Ethernet slash Wi-Fi. I think this is more maybe of a billing question. Um, right now, when we, we purchase cellular service from Verizon slash AT&T, we are being charged for it. Um, we are working with our network with uh, Verizon and AT&T though to come up with a Wi-Fi slash Ethernet solution uh, as far as billing. So stay tuned for that one. We are working on that, but as of next week, there'll be a cellular charge as well. Got it. So Christopher, he had a question when we were looking under the hood. Uh, in particular about the bus connection, he asks, is this to supply power to a touchpad installed in proximity to the back connect, or is it a keypad bus interface with the native wired panels, bus terminals? Um, so kind of a couple questions there. Why don't you talk a little bit about what the bus connection is for, and then also kind of talk about how the keypad uh, interface works. So when, when, we're, when we're talking about a keypad, we're assuming it's the native DSC, Honeywell, hardwired keypad, or keypads, plural, that are already on site. Okay, so 
that's powering the native, if you will, hardwired keypad that's already there. And that bus connection there, that's the, let's say it's a Honeywell panel, that's the, the Vista keypad bus. The BATS keypad bus, all we're doing there is the same spot that you wire your hardwired keypad to on that Vista panel, the other end of that goes to the BATS four-wire bus. Um, could you power a hardwired keypad off there? I uh, wouldn't recommend it, wouldn't do it. Keep the four wires for the native keypads, keep them on the, on the Honeywell side, the DSC side. Um, if the, and I don't think the question was, was asking this, but I'll throw it out there anyway in case someone is, is wondering. Our touchscreen is a Wi-Fi touchscreen, so all we're doing to the touchscreen is just plugging it into an outlet. Right, it's Wi-Fi, so we're not running any uh, any bus wires to it. So that can really be any put anywhere in the home. Doesn't have to be near the yeah, uh, anywhere factory. in the home. Yeah, and we and you know hopefully this won't be the case too often, but we do have a, a Wi-Fi repeater for the touchscreens if you needed it. It'd have to be a pretty pretty large home, but uh, those are available too. Got it. Devin is one of several who ask about what is the cost for the back connect, and that's really something you want to talk to your uh, local distributor about, right? Yeah, um, I'm not going to go too deep on that one. Um, let, let's put it this way. The same price that you were paying for your current bats, uh, you should expect just right around the same price for the back connect. Not, uh, we're planning Got it. a now price increase at all for, for, the, for the release, no. Don is asking, is the Back Connect available now? Can wait till next Monday. That's when she's available. That's right. It'll be stocking on Monday, so go ahead and uh, start placing your orders. Nicholas asks, will we get a copy of this PowerPoint? Also, is this webinar being recorded so I can replay for others at our company? Uh, Nicholas, you'll be happy to hear that we will be sending out a link um, to the recorded version of this webinar that you are more than welcome to share with others in your company. Um, it includes uh, the PowerPoint, but if uh, you want a hard copy of that um, without the voiceover, I think we can accommodate. So dial 1-888-88-ALULA. That's 1-888-88-ALULA, and we can help you out, get you anything you need. Uh, we love educating our uh, partners. Uh, so we've got another question from Daniel. Also interested in the cell provider use. Same Verizon as the old ones. I think you hit this one, Chris. We've got AT&T on board now. Yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have Verizon. We have AT&T. Just, just to note, though, remember, it's the new category M1. So, you know, the, the tower that they're pointing to must have that capability as well. And, I, you know, I'm sure they're being proactive on this. They are. You know, we know that uh, 2G's gone, 3G's dropping here soon. So, um, it may not be, you know, if they, de they decide to drop an old uh, 2G, 3G tower and don't replace it, you know, we, we have to shoot. We have to be talking to an M1 tower. So that, that would be the only caveat. But uh, I'm, you know, confident that uh, AT&T and Verizon are, are planning for this. Got it. Okay. Um, Mike has a question. So if myself or client has Connect Plus with wireless cards, and Z-Wave cards, um, Connect Plus nor BAT will only do one partition. So I would need a Z-Wave card or wireless card um, because I, I would not need a Z-Wave card or wireless card because they already exist in my Connect Plus, correct? Um, well, the, the Connect Plus reference that I made earlier was just that, hey, if, you have, if you're using our Connect Plus panels and you're doing home automation, it's the same Z-Wave card um, available for purchase. And remember that we're not fully supporting Z-Wave quite yet, um, but another month for Z-Wave, but it will be the same card that you put in a Connect Plus. Um, Got it. And we'll only do partition one. Yeah, as of today and on the initial rollout, we're, we're partition one only as far as uh, uh, end user interaction with it. Um, I think I said before that we can report more than one partition. It's just the controlling is partition one only. Got it. 
So from Bob, he, he's asking, who is the Canadian carrier? Rogers right now. And we are... What's that? Um, Rogers is the, the Canadian provider. And we do have... Uh, and really, we're, I don't want to say we're at the mercy, but it's, it's when they start to turn on. And they have started to, to uh, flip the switch in Canada for M1. So in those areas that are supporting M1, Rogers is the carrier. So I guess that is good news. They are have already started to, to flip the switch in a lot of places in Canada. So that was that is actually happening faster and sooner than we thought it would be. Great. Nick has a question. Does Alula have a communication pathway solution for legacy 2-gig GC2 panels as an alternative to Alarm.com and SecureNet? You know, I'm not uh, – an expert on the, the two gig side and the GC2 side, I will just say if they have a phone line and they communicate contact ID, we can take them over. Right? So need a phone line, we need tip and ring. If it communicates contact ID, then we're good to go. Got it. We got another question about compatibility. Any Simon from GE compatibility or is that dead? We actually do have a version. It's not the BAT Connect version, but we have an existing BAT radio that will work exclusively with the Simon panel. Yes. Got it. And this BAT still does not take over life safety devices, correct, from Nicholas? Well, this is a – yeah, good question. This is a little bit different conversation. You might be thinking of our translators because the BATs really – they don't, they don't, you don't hook up zones to it. You don't, it doesn't hold any zone information. We are just forwarding what's in that panel, that Honeywell, that DSC, GE, NAPCO panel. So our translators, which is a different product, right, those do not take over life safety. But the BAT, remember, it doesn't hold any zone programming. It's just a communicator. So it will communicate your life safety devices because it's not housing any zone information. Cool, thanks for the clarification. Devin asks, you stated that you no longer need the tip and ring to be connected. What would be the circumstances of still having to connect it if uh, it is still on board? Yep, sorry, I'm, I'm cutting it for you. <laughs> um, that's only with Honeywell and certain Honeywell panels. Your, your Vista series, we don't need tip and ring, okay? Uh, ESC, we do need tip and ring. We need keypad bus, and we – well, it depends, it depends what kind of app experience you want. Uh, we're, I'm assuming you want the full-blown app experience. Then on a DSC panel, we need tip – we need – for the app experience, uh, remote upload downloading um, with the Lula Connect, we need the keypad bus connection. And for forwarding central uh, signals to the central station, we need tip and ring. So it's kind of panel dependent, but it's – I don't want to say it's easiest. It's less wires with the Honeywell Vista series. We don't need tip and ring. We do on DSC. Uh, stay tuned on uh, Interlogix and NAPCO. Um, we're just not that, we're not quite there yet where I can't give you a solid answer, but uh, hit me up in another month or two. I should have more info for you. We got a couple questions on Canada. I think we already hit uh, the part about uh, Canadian providers, but if we didn't, you just dial one eight 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 Alula, and we can address it specifically. Uh, here's a question from Jeremy: Can you power the touchscreen keypad with the existing keypad wiring? Yeah, you you can. Um, yeah, so you you know you traditionally have your four wire keypad bus there. Um, just uh, splice in you know whatever whatever color colors you choose. You know, pick two black, red, green, yellow, use the existing four-wire run and splice it down to two, and then, you know, do a little splicing with the connector on each end of the touchscreen. We've, we've seen that done a lot. Um, so, yeah, fine on doing that as long as it's not, you know, we're talking thousands and thousands of feet of wire run, which uh, I would guess in most homes is not the case. So, yeah, perfectly fine to do that. We see that uh, being done all the time. Uh, even on our Connect Plus panel. Christopher asks, if a customer does not have a Wi-Fi network or Internet at all, is the Back Connect essentially supplying its own Wi-Fi network to support Alula touchpad control? Great question. Um, 
Yes, but let me let me talk a little bit more about that. So that Wi-Fi card, if you will, although it's internal, it's not something you can you can plug in it, take in and out. It's just built onto the motherboard. That is for the touch screen. Okay, so it really, you wouldn't even need to have Wi-Fi in the home for the touch screen. But to communicate to the central station, that's where I'm hopping on. And we are working on, and you will see not next week, but down the road, it's on the roadmap, to view video through the touch screen, which is coming. Then we do need to hop on the customer's Wi-Fi. So what do we need customer's Wi-Fi for? For the central station. And if you want to look and play with the video through the touch screen, not going to be next week, but it's coming, there you'll need the customer's Wi-Fi. If you wanted to use Wi-Fi, you could do Ethernet, right, for that as well. You don't need to do Wi-Fi. But the built-in Wi-Fi card is for the touchscreen communication. So it does have its own Wi-Fi network for the touchscreen control. And remember, touchscreens, we're talking September-ish, so another, another couple of months out. And a good follow-up on that question from Randy. What is the touchscreen range in feet for Wi-Fi, and are there repeaters available? Well, that, that one's a little tough. <laughs> you know, what's, what's the customer's, uh, um, what's the customer's Wi-Fi strength if, you know, depending on what we're using it for? Um, you know, so if we're using it for reporting to the central station or we're using it, if we're using that to do video, video when that feature comes out, we're really at the mercy of the customer's um, Wi-Fi network. Our Wi-Fi network, a couple hundred feet would be, Probably, you know, open air range, a couple hundred feet. Now, typically, we don't live, work in open air range. So, yeah, walls will cut down that range a little bit. From what we've seen, most mid to average size homes, uh, as far as square footage, very rarely do we see a repeater that's being used or needed. But, yes, we do have Wi-Fi extenders. Uh, for the for the touchscreen, so we do we do make those as well. But I've personally never seen one that's had to be used, but um, I've heard of a couple of installs, you know, multi-million dollar homes where, you know, touchscreens are kind of spread out. And by the way, four touchscreens is, is uh, the max. So hopefully uh, that number's robust enough, but uh, four touchscreens will be the max. And, I, you know, I suppose that if, you know, the house was that large, we may have to utilize a uh, Wi-Fi, our Wi-Fi repeater. But like I said, I personally have not seen that uh, have to be the case yet for most home slash small businesses. We should all be lucky enough to live in a home that big. Uh, I think that would be the uh, yeah. least of my problems. <laughs> uh, John has a really good question about Cat M1. How do I know if the nearest tower is Cat M1 compliant? I am I'm, I'm guessing and making an assumption here, but I, I would I would bet that if you went to the Verizon webpage or the AT&T webpage, I would imagine they would have a coverage map um, that would show you which towers are 5G slash 4G ready, um, that that would give you your answer. But uh, that is a guess on my part. But I know I've traditionally done that in the past, um, you know, to look at 3G slash 4G range. I would imagine they'd have to have something on, the, on their providers' uh, websites to look at that. Well, CAT M1 is a part of the 4G band and will eventually be moved to the 5G band. So I'm, I'm pretty sure all the towers would be CAT M1 compliant and you wouldn't have any kind of issues there. I, I, would, uh, I would imagine that would be the case, yeah. James has a question. Can I use my existing Alula keypads that I have in stock for use with future installations and takeovers with the new Bat Connect? Great question. Um, so the short answer I'm going to say is yes, with a caveat. Um, make sure that that keypad is up and running because remember, to get these new features, um, we're going to need to send an up, a firmware upgrade to them, and that's just having them online, right? So as long as that keypad's online on the Alula network, we can hit it with that upgrade that would give you, you know, once let's say we you know, when we roll out video on the touchscreen, right? That'll be an upgrade for the keypad. We'll shoot that over the air. Uh, if it's cellular, we'll do it uh, via the Ethernet slash Wi-Fi. But yeah, as long as that uh, keypad um, is up and running on the Alula network, we're able to flash it remotely. So yes. 
Got it. Now, Bob has a question. Does Back Connect work with 4G also? Great question, Bob. Absolutely. Absolutely. 4G, 5G is the category M1 technology. So wherever there's an M1 tower with 4G uh, slash 5G, we're good to go. Matt has a question. Do we go through a monitoring station to activate or just a LULA? How do we get these things lit up? Yeah, great question. You will you will be activating on the Alula Connect website, our new website that we're launching next week. Um, and really, any central station that can handle contact ID or IP to IP, we're, we're typically good to go to work with. So, you know, that that I would imagine 98, 99 percent of the central stations out there uh, can get a, a signal from Alula, either contact ID or IP. But you will be activating David with Alula on uh, Alula Connect. And David's got kind of a long question here. I'll see if I can summarize. It sounds like the installer still needs the installer code to make this work. If the panel is locked out by the previous alarm provider, then it's a no-go. Um, I'm going to say it depends on the panel. And why, why I'm saying that is Honeywell, we're able to auto-program just about everything that we need to do. It, the, the short answer is maybe. And I know that's, that's kind of a fuzzy answer. It depends what areas have been locked out. Um, we don't need to know the installer code. Um, we do need to get into it, though, on certain panels. So it's kind of a panel-specific. I guess the safe answer to say is, if the panel is locked out, it's probably not a real good option that you're going to be able to get into it. And on a DSC panel, uh, you're out of luck. Honeywell, it depends on what other settings have been touched. Um, it, like I say, it's kind of panel sounds, specific. Your, look, yeah, that's a complicated question. Your best bet, your best bet is Honeywell uh, because we don't, have, we don't have to get in there and manually program too much. Uh, DSC, the installer on site, has to get in there and program a few more things. So you would need would need with the DSC to have the installer code. Um, if things were, and here once again the devil's in the details, if things were set up correctly and it's three or four things that would have to be correctly, and I don't have my install manual in front of me, I'm, I'm going on memory here, but um, there is a chance you could do it with a Honeywell panel. I Great, that'll bring it in to this. Email, oh, sorry, Kay. I was just going to say, I think my um, uh, email address is uh, part of the presentation here. If not, I'll, I'll shoot it out here before we, we end the call. Feel free to shoot me an email. I can give you a little bit more detailed answers on some of these uh, questions that you have. Be happy to do that. Chris, why don't you, why don't you go ahead and give that email out now? Yeah, so uh, Chris dot Bartholomew at Alula dot net. Chris dot Bartholomew Great. at Alula dot net. And if you want more information about the Back Connect, you can visit go dot Alula dot net backslash Back Connect. You can also call one eight 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 Alula. That's a lot of eights. One eight 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 Alula. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and um, this brings the webinar to a close. Thank you, everybody.